In this video, we're going to talk about the top three mistakes that families make when planning to live in a multi-generational home or intergenerational home and how you can learn from these mistakes to make sure that your multi-generational home planning goes as smoothly as possible and your family can start off on the right foot. Make sure you stay until the end because I promise you that these three tips are not mainstream and I guarantee that you're gonna get something new out of it. Hi, I'm Kira the Realtor and I work with Remax Realtron in Toronto and the GTA and more specifically Pickering, Ajax, Whitby, Oshawa and Curtis and I help families with everything involved in selling their current home to finding and purchasing their new multi-generational home that is more suited to the multi-generational lifestyle that they want to take on. And trust me, it is a lifestyle. So let's jump right in. Home prices are getting higher. 17% of first time home buyers are already using gifts from mom or dad to help with their down payment. The cost of living is getting higher. And this is especially impactful for people going into retirement because they're gonna have a fixed income, right? And uh, childcare costs are the second highest in all of Canada. So it just makes more sense for families to consider pooling their resources and considering a win-win lifestyle that is multi-generational living. So we're going to talk about the top three mistakes that families are making when they are considering this intergenerational living arrangement. Mistake number one, assuming a mutual understanding. I know that they are your kids, but believe me, having lived apart from you for a, probably a while, I guarantee you that they have picked up some habits that are going to be alien to you. And on the flip side, I can promise you that the prospect of returning to live with mom and dad is probably a little terrifying, unless there are clear boundaries on both sides. So the mistakes that families are making is not having enough and deep enough conversations around these boundaries and what they will look like. Most families assume that they're gonna kind of get into a routine and gel for the day-to-day -day stuff, but it is exactly these tiny, minute details that make up the straws that build to break the camel's back. So you do need to be having these conversations as ridiculous as they might seem. Conversations around routine, routine in the mornings. Talk about your, the routine or the accommodations that you might need for work, especially around COVID-19 if you're going to be working from home. Childcare, who is going to be helping with and to what degree uh, with extracurricular activities, picking up and dropping off and homework help. Don't assume that everyone is on the same page about who's going to help and how often. A lot of grandparents just want to be grandparents and not second parents. So having these conversations about what expectations are, are crucial. Also, coming and going and wee hours of the night are separate entrances going to be mandatory. Uh, what about guests? Overnight guests? Partying? gatherings, having the kinds of conversations that put out what your expectations are and what you're used to are really going to save a lot of temperatures rising in the future. Privacy. This is a big one. What does it mean? What does it mean for a mom or a dad who might be used to barging in a room to tidy up? Right? These nitty gritty conversations can seem simple, but they're actually going to do a lot for setting the stage for the features that your home will need. Do we need shared or separate living spaces? Can we find a home like this in our budget or should we be building one, which actually could be cheaper? So these conversations lay the foundation for everything that is going to follow. Don't skip them. You've lived with each other your whole lives. Don't assume. Mistake number two, not buying for future needs. Now, 
what this means is really considering how everyone in the household is going to be aging up. We have a tendency in North America to really think about, as home buyers, our needs for the short to medium term. And it's not really our fault. Homes are really designed for you to be moving every seven to 10 years. They don't come with a lot of space in a starter home, right? So we're kind of conditioned to think more short term, but we really wanna take a long term view for everyone in the family. Think about kids. Young kids need more space outside of their bedrooms as they're younger because they need to play. But as they age, kids, adolescents and adults tend to want more space inside of their rooms. So that's an important feature to consider when you're buying. Older parents might have the expectation of aging in place for as long as possible. So you really want to be thinking about what their needs might be to the future. Consider that purchases of this nature, multi-generational homes, are more pricey. And we're not just talking about the money that it takes to secure a property, but they can also cost a lot to renovate. So the last thing that you want to be doing is renovating for something unintelligently because you haven't put enough thought or had enough conversations about what everyone's long-term needs are. Multi-generational families tend to also live in place much longer. You'll want to make sure that you are having these conversations so that you are buying the right type of home that has the capabilities to build out to suit the renovations that you might be considering. And that means having the right zoning also. If you're not buying the home in the right place, then the renovations that you might consider might not be able to happen in the first place. So that's why these conversations are so important. Multi-generational families live in place longer and so are more open to spending on renovations to suit. So make sure that you renovate intelligently and consider these key points like chronic illness, chronic pain that tends to come on later in life, and any disabilities. Mistake number three, not considering an exit strategy. Exit strategy, that sounds like an investor term, and it is. And essentially what it means is that finding a way to exit or sell a home that everyone is comfortable with in the time frame that everyone is comfortable with. So important to make sure that everyone is on the same page about time frames. Older parents might, as I mentioned, really want to age in place for as long as possible. So are you considering that this is gonna be a forever thing for you? Younger parents or the kids in the situation, if they have kids themselves, may think about this as, you know, when my kids are in college, that's when I want to have an empty nest. So making sure that everyone is on the same timeline is gonna be crucial. Something else to consider is that as older, typically older parents or parents usually get their retirement in income, a bulk of it from the equity that they have in their current properties. And they sell and downsize and um, move into something more comfortable that suits their budget. And they have a chunk of cash to draw down on. So this is now in a multifamily home, no longer going to be a unilateral decision, neither to refinance, right? How much should we take? When should we take it? Something that now has to be a group discussion and that lump sum of cash may not be there for you. So having these conversations allows everyone to plan for their retirement and future needs in a way that's going to be financially beneficial to all. You can't predict everything and we would go crazy if we tried to. So just having a conversation around plan A, B, or C that would, you know, put forward some strategies that everyone could be comfortable with to shift between is going to really make a big deal in how you even purchase the property in the first place. Whose name should be on the property? Um, how is it going to be best for us if we need to refinance? Who is the strongest? Who has the more um, job security and the highest income? These decisions matter, right? Of course, we don't expect you to know it all. So having a conversation with an informed realtor um, and a lawyer who knows about multi-generational home planning or intergenerational family structures and planning for these things is going to be um, imperative. 
You just want to make sure that you are protecting everyone's financial interests um, in the way that you have all intended by entering into this purchase in the first place. So if this video was of value to you, and I hope it was, please check out more of my content and click on the playlist right here. If you'd like to chat about your family's needs or have a one-on-one -on -one consultation, I would love to see how I can help you do more. So my contact information is gonna be in the description box below. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you for watching and see you in my next video.